Um, first of all, thinking about why I ended up doing MS research, I was interested in neurology and training as a neurology registrar. And through that, saw a lot of people with multiple sclerosis and really decided that it would be great to try and do something to help them. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at people with MS and their brothers and sisters without MS. Generally, the way that we recruit people is either by telling them about our study when I see them in the clinic. However, there's one patient who I got chatting to whilst on a bus um, travelling home one evening. It turned out that she had MS and was interested in taking part in my study. So she's now coming up with her sister in the next few weeks to take part. So one of the things that I spend quite a bit of my spare time doing is playing the cello. I play with an orchestra called the Corinthians Orchestra. Um, and when I was thinking about applying to medical school, very nearly didn't, very nearly decided to go to music college. And I actually got as far as sending in all the forms to go to music college. But overall, I'm glad I chose medicine. Over the last year or so, I've managed to raise money for both the MS Society and the MS Trust um, through doing fun runs. When I'm not on foot or running, I tend to get around in my slightly ridiculous car, which is turquoise convertible MX-5. Mr Cello sits in the front seat next to me which sometimes means that I get slightly strange looks when driving around. My name is Ruth Dobson, I'm here to talk to you about a study that I'm carrying out, the MS sibling study, or as I like to think about it, how you and your family can help with my MS research. So by now, you've heard plenty about the various risk factors in MS and work that's being carried out regarding these. So just a brief recap. So lack of vitamin D, an increased response against the Epstein-Barr virus and glandular fever illness. Having a relative with MS is a risk factor, and we'll come on to that. Not being born in winter. This is related to vitamin D. And finally, smoking that Minnie Maria just told you all about. So these factors appear to interact, leading to, leading to overall MS risk. Now, although there's a jigsaw, not all the factors are required to develop MS. There are plenty of people, for example, who have MS who have never smoked. But um, what they appear to do is interact, lead to immune system overactivity, and then myelin damage and the onset of MS. Now, the way in which they interact is not always clear. As Ram mentioned, we know we are looking into this, and there is increasing evidence coming out. But what we don't know is whether you need all of the risk factors, a single critical risk factor, if, or if there's an, a number of risk factors that are required once you get over a threshold. So, back to my study. I'm studying siblings. Well, why study siblings? As you can see from this graph, MS risk, which is here, increases with, as you have closer relatives with MS. So it's not particularly clear, but this is aunt and uncle, niece and nephew, cousins, child and parent, and then siblings is this graph, and then dizygotic and monozygotic twins, so non-identical twins, and then identical twins have the highest risk of sharing MS. Now, clearly, if you're trying to study people who are at risk of MS but haven't developed it, looking at identical twins, one of whom have MS and one of whom doesn't, is going to give you the most clues. However, there aren't many identical twin pairs like this. Um, so we can't really limit a study to just this group, or even just to non-identical and identical twins, because there's not many of them. So siblings are the next most likely to share MS risk factors. So this is what I'm looking at. Now, siblings share some of the MS risk. So this is siblings with and siblings without share some of the MS risk, but not all of the risk. So why is this sibling risk higher in, um, than in the general population? What is it that siblings might share um, that people in the general population don't have? Well, first of all, genetics does play a role. So, in, with the way inheritance works, you've got two parents who then, say, have a number of children. Now, these children all share a number of features from mum and dad. So they each get half of their genes from each parent. Now, overall, between all the children, they share about half of their genes. So between brothers and sisters, they share about half of the genetic information. So is, is it all in the genes, is it all in the shared genes, this increased risk in siblings? Well, no, because identical twins, the risk is here. It's about a third of identical twins. If you have one twin with MS, the other one goes on to get it. Identical twins have all of the same genetic information. So it can't all be in the genes. So what else is there? Well, environmental factors contribute too. Now, I know you've heard an awful lot about environmental factors this morning. 
Um, I'm not going to recap what they are, I've already said that. But what I would say is that, as I'm sure you're aware, if you have brothers and sisters, you can share a lot of the environment with your brothers and sisters. When you're growing up as youngsters, you share, you often live in the same place, um, have similar interactions. But also, we know that we're very different from our brothers and sisters and actually do different things with our lives. So there are some risk factors that may be shared and others that may be different. And what I'm really interested in doing is looking at both the similarities and the differences to try and cast greater light over what these differences and similarities are. So hopefully, by studying siblings without MS, as I said, the similarities and differences will become more apparent between those with and those without MS. And in turn, this will help us to determine what goes on to cause one sibling to get MS and the other one not to. So, back to the original title of my talk, how can you and your family help me to determine the cause of MS? Well, in my opinion, the best way is to volunteer to take part in my study. I may be a bit biased, though. Say someone decides to take part. Well, what's involved? Well, it's a trip to the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel where you'll see me sign a consent form and then I can answer, um, before signing the consent form, I will answer any questions that you might have, either before you coming up or on the day. And then what I'll do is ask some questions about environmental risk factors, so about things like smoking, about where you were born, whether you've lived abroad at all, which we use as a marker for vitamin D levels, and then take both some blood and some urine samples from both the person with MS and their unaffected siblings. Now, as we saw briefly in the video, I'll analyse the samples in the lab. What am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at the white blood cells, which are the immune cells within the blood, um, and also looking at antibodies, which are immune signal molecules, which we can see in the blood, to try and work out if these play a role in the development of MS. I also look at other markers of an overactive immune system, both in the blood and the urine. And finally, looking at various genetic markers that have both been associated with MS risk, and also reduced MS risk. So is it that one sibling has all the MS risk genes and the other one has none of the MS risk genes? Is that actually the difference? So how do you volunteer to take part? So you can get in touch with us. We can send out further information in the form of a patient information sheet and then arrange an appointment for you to come up and see me. And my email and phone number are on that slide as well, but they are on the flyer. So I'd just like to say thank you to the MS Society who are paying for this study and also to everyone who's taken part so far, given samples. I can see there's a few people in the audience today who've taken part already. So thank you and any questions. <laughs>